Right. Welcome, everybody, to this session of discrete optimization talks. Um, we have first up uh, Anu Rud Subaramanya, um, whom I know quite well for a, a long time um, uh, since uh, since our joint Carnegie Mellon days. Um, uh, Anu Rud is now the Charles and Edith Schneider Early Career Assistant Professor in the Department of Industrial and Manufacturing Engineering at Penn State. Uh, previously, he was a postdoc at Argonne National Labs, and he obtained his uh, PhD and bachelor's degrees uh, from CMU and IIT Bombay, respectively. Uh, his uh, research interests include nonlinear and discrete optimization under uncertainty to address problems in critical infrastructure, energy, and transportation systems. Um, in particular, I'm going to add to this, uh, Anirud has, uh, he comes from this uh, chemical engineering department at CMU, which is very well known for its nonlinear optimization and operations research contributions, actually. So I, I I didn't know that when I came into CMU, and then suddenly I meet this uh, person who like knows more about OR than I do, uh, coming from chemi and working on, uh, you know, vehicle routing and all these things uh, that uh, he was teaching me about um, and uh, doing wonderful presentations throughout his PhD. So I'm very happy to have him now. Now um, at, at the dot, at dots, um, and looking forward to his dot. Yeah, thanks a lot, Alex. Thank, thanks for you know that's that's very kind of you. Uh, I'm very happy to be you know talking about some of this work. Um, so yeah, so today I'll be talking about um, uh, robust vehicle routing problems under uncertainty, uh, and in particular, I'll be talking about some exact branch price and cut algorithms. Uh, so this is joint work with uh, Chrysanthos Gunaris, uh, Jose Pinto, uh, Panos Repousis, and Akam Wang. Uh, and before I proceed, I would like to thank uh, the National Science Foundation and the Department of Energy for uh, providing financial support for uh, uh, supporting my research in the past as well as in the present. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let's get started. So I'm sure uh, most, uh, if not all of the audience have seen the, this problem before. Uh, so the vehicle routing problem in its most classical version uh, is, is the following, right? So you have, you have a depot where you have a number of vehicles that are available for delivery. And you want to essentially serve uh, a number of customers that are um, scattered you know, uh, around you geographically. Um, and so each of, your, each of these vehicles has a certain finite capacity uh, that it can carry in terms of, think of this as the number of, as the amount of goods that each vehicle can carry. Um, and each customer has a certain demand, uh, which I've denoted uh, in these numbers uh, inside these little blobs. Um, so the vehicle routing problem essentially asks two questions. Um, well, the first is a bin packing component. It says, which vehicle must serve which customer? So that the total load on that uh, vehicle is less than its capacity. Uh, and the second question it asks is, in which order must these uh, customers be visited? So as to minimize the distance travel. So in some sense, it's it's both a bin packing problem and a TSP in one. So a solution to this problem might look something like follows, where we where you can see that the the, the total load carried on each of these different colored routes, representing a different vehicle, is actually less than the vehicle capacity. Uh, now, this is the classical version of the problem, also called the capacitive vehicle routing problem. But in reality, we have many more constraints. Uh, so in addition to vehicle capacities, which is the version that I spoke about, uh, you also have things like time windows on customers. So you can only visit customers within certain uh, periods of, uh, within certain times of the day. Vehicles cannot drive for a certain, more than a certain amount of time for let's say eight hours. Uh, and you often also have other complicating constraints. So you have things like you often have multiple depots, you have multiple products, you have fleets consisting of big trucks and small trucks. Uh, you're often doing pickups and deliveries. You often have uh, vehicles with different types of drivetrains and so forth. Um, and as you can imagine, this problem is essentially at the heart of distribution logistics, and it, it, it comes up in uh, all sorts of places, in, not just in commercial transportation like trucking, but also in things like uh, uh, courier services or urban freight, uh, shipping, um, designing uh, regular schedules for uh, your uh, your city, uh, you know, city uh, public transit, um, uh, waste collection, and, and the list is endless. Um, so the focus of this talk is going to be on, okay, how do you now, uh, what do you do in an environment where things are not exactly as clear as I showed it in the picture before? Right. So often you don't know your travel costs or your travel times. They are not known with um, 
Um, but it, it, there's often a lot of noise around these forecasts. Uh, you may have disruptions as your vehicles are dispatched. Uh, vehicles may not be available. Un- may, may not be available. For example, drivers may call in sick. Um, often your customer orders themselves may not be known in advance. Uh, and things like demands and service times, which we often take for granted as clear, crisp numbers, uh, may not be known uh, when you are dispatching these vehicles. Um, and so it, it's it's been shown multiple times, and it's kind of very obvious that, in fact, if you actually ignore these things, if you ignore the fact that um, your, 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 your parameters, which essentially define the, the vehicle routing problem, um, are, are ignored, then this can hurt efficiency, but more importantly, this can hurt reputation. So our customers are essentially going to go for a different uh, 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 service provider. Uh, it can you know, hurt cost, service levels, and the environment, and many other things, right? So in some sense, you want to be making decisions, uh, in particular, routing decisions, uh, in lieu of this uncertain information. So the central premise of this talk is going to be something as follows. Um, so there's, there's a number of very uh, very sophisticated and state-of-the-art codes and algorithms for deterministic routing problems. So if everything is known in advance uh, uh, or is known with, with, with a fairly high level of certainty, then algorithms like local search and meta heuristics, uh, branch price and cut algorithms, uh, very advanced cutting planes, column generation, dynamic programming type of algorithms have been developed over the last, I would say, several decades or so. Um, and so this has really been the workhorse of deterministic routing uh, algorithms. So the, 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 the key question that we are asking in this talk and the, the, the question that we've been trying to uh, uh, answer in the last kind of, I would say, two or three years is, can we make modular changes to these very classical algorithms for deterministic routing, uh, and the keyword again being modular changes, so minimal changes, in a way that these algorithms can now address uncertainty without losing the key features of these algor- of these algorithms. So in some sense, you don't want to destroy, uh, for example, the computational scalability that these classical algorithms offer, um, but you also at the same time want to, in some sense, be uncertainty aware. So this is the question that uh, is, is kind of uh, the overarching you know, goal of this theme of research. Um, and so in, to, to address that, I'll first talk about what the robust vehicle routing problem means. So I'll kind of give like a, a brief problem statement. Um, and then I'll, before actually talking about um, you know, cutting planes and column generation, I'll actually foray this, I'll, I'll foray our approach, I'll motivate our approach uh, actually through uh, by talking first about how it applies to local search. Uh, interestingly. Um, and uh, I, I also want to preface uh, just before we go into it that today's talk focuses purely on the case of demand uncertainty. Uh, but we have kind of done some work where you can also show how these things kind of also can address things, uh, uh, can also address uncertainty in, in, in parameters like, for example, travel times in your network, service times, customer uh, customers, travel costs, and so forth. But I will not be talking about that just for just to keep things uh, uh, simple. All right, so what is the robust vehicle routing problem? So let's again consider the same problem that I showed you before, uh, except that now if you notice, there's not just one number within each of these blobs, which is the demand of that customer, but you essentially have an interval, right? So you don't exactly know your customer uh, demands precisely, you only have some uh, rough idea. And the question now is, okay, what are the routes? So which customer serves which customer? Uh, which truck serves which customer, and in what order, so that you can meet demand under every realization of, uh, of uh, within these uh, intervals, right? And again, every vehicle has a certain finite capacity. So now it turns out that I mean, and this is not surprising that if you look at optimal routes that you planned in the deterministic case, and this was these were the routes that you obtained before, uh, they are off. They are no, no longer feasible under this new definition of the problem, right? And the reason is because if you look at the blue route, the maximum possible load on this blue route, which is going to be equal to two plus four plus three plus three, it actually exceeds the vehicle capacity. So there is a realization of the demand where you're actually not feasible anymore. So we would call the solution uh, an infeasible solution in the robust sense. Um, And a different solution, which was previously suboptimal, is now optimal in this kind of worst case setting. So essentially what we are going for is uh, uh, 
trying to, if you were to generalize this problem or abstract this even more, we are going to be given some sort of a set of possible realizations of demand, right? So we'll call this the uncertainty set, and we'll treat this essentially as our fundamental model of uncertainty. And our goal is going to be to find vehicle routes such that the total load um, remains less than the vehicle capacity under any possible realization of this demand from this uncertainty set Q. Now, in this example that I just showed you before, it's kind of contrived, and it's almost very simple, right? Because if you think about it, the uncertainty set in that case was actually just a hyper rectangle. So every, every axis of this hyper rectangle is a customer demand. There's a low value and there's a high value, and all these demands are essentially independent of each other. And because they're independent of each other, every customer uh, can, the, the worst case value is attained when every customer simultaneously achieves its worst case demand, right? So this is almost a too simple of a problem. And you might say this is in fact too conservative because you often don't expect that uh, on any given day, every customer is essentially going to place their worst case demand simultaneously, right? Uh, so in, in, in a different language, if you, if you have a basket of apples, it's unlikely that all apples are going to be rotten at the same time. So in some sense, what you want to do is you want to come up with an uncertainty set. You want to shape this uncertainty set to capture correlations in your demand data. And you want to size this uncertainty set to capture some sort of level of risk aversion. Uh, in some sense, such that given a parameter gamma, you want to design this uncertainty set Q such that this probabilistic statement holds, right? So that with very high probability, the total load, um, or, or with very low probability, the, the total, the, 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 the probability that the load on a route will exceed the vehicle capacity will be less than some number gamma, right? So in some sense, given a gamma, you want to design a set Q such that this statement holds. Um, and there are several sets that actually do this. And this is actually not part of our research, but this is going back to classical research in robust optimization again over the last uh, few decades. Um, and so the first, the most common one is for example, a budget set, right? And this essentially comes from a central limit type of argument. So if you look at the mean of uh, independent random variables, or, or uh, the, the mean of these, these random variables, so Q1 plus Q uh, up to Qn divided by n, so this is the mean, must be essentially looks something like the population mean with the variance given by sigma over square root n, right? And you can essentially generalize this where you have you know, uh, different means, uh, but essentially you have, essentially, uh, you're essentially putting limits on the sums of different types of random variables, right? And so uh, speaking empirically, I mean, uh, practically, you can have a budget, for example, at the zip code level, you can have a budget at the neighborhood level, you can have a budget at the city level and so forth. Um, and these can be thought of as aggregate forecasts. Another type of uncertainty set, for example, is called a factor model set, uh, which is also very popular in, in portfolio optimization, for example. And this essentially comes from a low dimensional approximation of the true uncertainty. Uh, so this typically comes from something like a PCA or like a factor analysis of your data. Um, another uncertainty set, which is perhaps the most popular one in robust optimization, uh, is, is a cardinality constraint set, also called a Bertsima Shim set, where essentially you say that the, the number of uh, demand parameters that can simultaneously deviate from their nominal, denoted by Q0, uh, can be at most gamma, right? So if you have gamma is equal to one, at most one demand value can, can, can deviate from its nominal value. Um, you can also have ellipsoids, and these are essentially motivated by the fact that confidence regions of multivariate Gaussians are essentially ellipsoids. Uh, or you can also just have discrete sets, right? So if you just have a bunch of historical data that are kind of clean data that you, that, that you rely on, or maybe they have come from some sort of Monte Carlo sampling scheme, uh, then you can have a set which looks something like that. So the question that you want to now ask is, okay, how can you now design uh, routes that are robust uh, when you are given any of these uncertainty sets as an input, right? So, so in some sense, we let the modeler decide how they want to model their uncertainty set, whether they want to do it via budget sets or via these factor models or ellipsoids or however they want to do it. Um, and how can we now design a, a set of robust routes? And so it turns out that this is slightly non-trivial. Um, and so the reason why is because of the following. So let's say that we only want to uh, verify if a solution is feasible under this definition of robust feasibility that we proposed, right? So let's take this uh, solution on the, uh, this, this, uh, this routing plan on the left. Um, and let's say if we want to verify, is this solution feasible for all possible demand realizations, right? So, so 
so essentially we're asking the question is the total load on this red route less than the vehicle capacity for all demand realizations so how can we do that we can do that by essentially computing the maximum value of q1 plus q2 plus q3 plus q4 where qi is the demand of customer i and we can essentially maximize this linear function over the uncertainty set if this if this value is less than the vehicle capacity we say that it's robust feasible and if it's not we say it's not feasible right um now essentially this depending on the, the geometry of this uncertainty set this is typically either a linear or a quadratic program let's say it's a convex optimization problem in general and so you might say okay well that's not that's not too difficult right i mean this is after all these are all uh, polynomial time solvable problems um and in the next couple of slides i want to kind of argue that this is actually too slow <laughs> So solving an LP or a QP is actually too slow for what we want to use this for. So to understand why this is the case, we kind of have to know how local search itself works. So local search, again, this goes back to the late uh, 60s uh, or maybe even earlier. Uh, again, this was originally proposed to solve uh, TSPs, right? So essentially you define a local search neighborhood. So think of a relocate move. So you start from an initial solution, which looks something like this. A relocate move essentially says, okay, can I just take an arbitrary node of this or in the solution and move it, relocate it essentially to some other position in the solution, right? So I just move it from here, from this route into this route. Right? That's a relocate move. Um, you can similarly define other types of moves. So you can define a neighborhood. So for example, you can define a two-op neighborhood where you essentially take two edges of the solution and you just swap them, right? You swap them with two other edges to come with a different solution. And there's a whole library of these. So there's the exchange moves, there's the or op moves, and so forth. Um, the key point to realize is that these local search moves are essentially at the core of all commercial codes and meta heuristics for deterministic routing problems. And so the way these kinds of, in a very, very simplified way, if I had to kind of you know, take out the essence of these commercial codes, the way they work is you start off by constructing some initial solution. You then do local search on it using a library of these different moves to come up with a locally optimal solution over these neighborhoods. You then put up the solution somehow, and then you iterate until you come up with a reason, and, and then you just stop when you when you run out of time. That's essentially how these uh, these codes work. So our key idea is: okay, can we somehow take this local search module and robustify it in some sense? So this is where we are going for. So why? Okay, why do we do this? And so the reason is because, well, first of all, uh, many of these modern deterministic routing algorithms, they use a, a logic and these implementations are quite sophisticated, right? So I've, I've kind of distilled it down into these three boxes, but they're often like thousands of lines of code, right? But this is, I mean, and so, so in some sense, trying to come up with a new meta heuristic to solve a robust vehicle routing problem, in our opinion, is a bit overkill. Right? So in some sense, we want to make very small changes to an existing code base to be able to come up with a robust solution. So in some sense, by doing, by just taking this local search, swapping it out with this new module, which we call a robust local search, uh, will essentially enable us to address uncertainty using algorithms for deterministic routing. And that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the key uh, idea. So, okay, so how can we do that, right? Uh, so if you are considering capital N number of local search neighborhoods, and if small n is the number of delivery points in, in the network, then each iteration of local search essentially evaluates roughly n times n squared moves, right? So practically speaking, I mean, each this is typically done very, very fast, right? So this relocate move, where I move customer four from this particular route into this route, this happens in a, fact, in, a, in a matter of a few milliseconds, right? So essentially doing thousands of these moves per second. So now let us, let me go back and we ask the question, okay, when we make a move, whenever we make any local search move, you always accept the move if it's an improving move, right? And a move is improving only if it's actually feasible. If, it, if first of all, the solution has to be feasible in the new move. When is the solution feasible? It's feasible if the worst case load on the new route is going to be less than or equal to the vehicle capacity, right? So we just discussed that. This is the new definition of robust feasibility. Um, so if we are solving an LP or a QP at every step of this uh, local search process where we are doing thousands of these per second, it's kind of going to be too difficult to be, you know, uh, so do this. We are essentially by solving an LP or a QP for that matter, right? So the first question is, okay, can we do something faster than just, you know, calling calling an optimization solver at this step? Perhaps more ambitiously, and what we actually want to do is, can we incrementally update the worst case load, right? So let's say for this left for the solution on the left hand side, 
we already had the worst case load. So we, in this, uh, for this magenta box, right? So we already had the value of the maximum value of Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 over the uncertainty set. Using this value, can I somehow get the value for the maximum of Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 plus Q4, which is the new customer that has now come into this particular set, right? So can I do this kind of incremental update is, 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 the, is the question. Um, and so we answer both of these questions in the positive. And so we say that for all of the classes of uncertainty sets that I showed before, and these are pretty much the majority of uncertainty sets that are, you know, uh, are in the robust optimization modelers portfolio, uh, we can essentially design data structures, which allow for essentially near constant time updates of these loads, right? So you start off with an initial solution, you come up with a worst case value by essentially, you know, uh, uh, you, you compute its worst case value, but then for every resulting solution, which is essentially just incrementally different from the previous one, you can come up with the worst case load in essentially near constant time. And we actually also compute the, the constants in front of these big O's so that we actually know the precise number of arithmetic operations that you have to do to come up with these worst case loads. And so this approach is actually very modular because it actually is, is not just modular with respect to the type of uncertainty set, but also across vehicle routing variants and also across different meta heuristics. So we just tested two of these in this particular case. And, it's, and it allows us to do this without losing scalability, right? So on this plot here, I'm essentially showing the time per local search iteration. Um, and if you look at the deterministic case, the very first bar, uh, and we I mean, normalize everything with respect to, det to deterministic case, we find that depending on the type of uncertainty set that you have, you only have to do marginally more work per iteration to be able to get robust solutions. And that's kind of the key message here. Now, so far, I haven't really spoken about any exact algorithms, right? There's no branch price and cut so far. This is all just heuristic. But, and so this actually motivates us, okay, can we use the same idea in some sense to rigorously obtain some sort of lower bounds, right? So can we quantify the suboptimality of these solutions using essentially more or less the same idea. And so that brings us uh, to uh, this, uh, you know, uh, the, the talk, the, the, the part of the talk, which is in the title of the, uh, uh, which is in the title, which is about branch price and cut. And so to do this, I'll, I'll talk about the classical set partitioning formulation for the vehicle routing problem. Um, and so this formulation is indexed over the set of all routes, uh, over the set of all routes, whose total load is less than the vehicle capacity. So imagine enumerating all such routes in your network, which start from the depot, which visit a subset of nodes and which end back at the depot, such that the total load, so if I, if I just follow this red route, the total load on this red route must be less than or equal to the vehicle capacity. I come up with a set of all such routes and I, I define a variable indexed by these routes, right? So which is zero or one. The second constraint then is essentially a set partition constraint, which says that each of these nodes must be Visit must be covered by exactly one of these routes, right? So every customer is visited exactly once. Um, and so this is a very classical formulation. And so the way you, you solve this formulation, or at least the way you solve is linear programming relaxation. So you essentially, you, you relax these zero one constraints. You define the, the problem over a subset of the route. So you don't define it over all routes because you cannot hope to do that uh, in any reasonable amount of time. And you essentially solve a restricted linear program. Right. Um, you then so you then look at the dual of this linear of this restricted linear program, and then you essentially price routes. You ask the question: Okay, are there routes which have improved the objective value of the solution? Right. So more precisely, you are asking the question: Are there routes? Are there columns of this linear program with negative reduced costs such that adding them in, back into the, the solution is essentially going to give me a better objective value? Right. And you can just iterate this procedure until you solve this linear programming relaxation. Now, when this whole procedure is kind of embedded within uh, a tree search, essentially we have a branch and price algorithm, right? So again, this is uh, IP 101. So hopefully uh, all of, I mean, uh, everyone has seen this before. Uh, so just before I proceed, so the, the, the column generation subproblem in this case, right? So the, the, when we ask the question, okay, are there routes with negative reduced costs? It essentially amounts to asking the question, is there a, is there a route on this, on this, uh, in, in this network? with a total load that is less than or equal to the capacity um, and whose objective value, which is actually the, the reduced cost is, is, is negative, right? And so this turns out to be a shortest path problem with resource constraints, because every time I, I visit a node, I'm essentially picking up a resource, which is given by the load of that node. And every time I step through the network, I'm, I keep accumulating this resource, but I'm constrained by the, the, the resource limit, which means that I should have a, capacity, a total load, which is less than 
um, the, the vehicle capacity. Uh, now, now this problem is actually uh, NP hard, but only weakly NP hard. And so there is, in fact, a, uh, this is again very well, it's very well known. There's actually a pseudo polynomial time algorithm to be uh, to solve this class of problems. And so our key idea is, okay, how can we now start to, in some sense, robustify this column generation procedure? And so the idea is, okay, can we, in some sense, price routes, which are partially robust, right? So that's the red box here. And so the way we do that is that is to realize that we are essentially only uh, pricing, we are only putting a resource with respect to one of the points in our uncertainty set, right? Of the infinitely many such points in the uncertainty set. And so what we do is, okay, can we now just, instead of looking at one of these points, can we look at, can we look at a sample of K vertices of the uncertainty set, right? A finite set of K vertices. And so every time I now step through this graph, I'm essentially picking up a load of not just with, corresponding to the nominal load, but defined with respect to each of these different scenarios, right? So if there's a scenario U, I'm picking up a, a, a load, which is given by the scenario U and similarly for V and so forth, right? So I'm essentially, redefining my set R to be the set of all routes whose total load is less than the capacity under K predefined scenarios of the uncertainty set. Now, as long as K is fixed, uh, you essentially are reducing the shortest path. The shortest path problem is generalized to a multiple a shortest path problem with multiple resource constraints, one for each of the scenarios of the uncertainty set. And because K is fixed, this actually continues to remain pseudo polynomial time solvable with, with a classical dynamic programming algorithm. And of course, but of course, I mean, the, the, the complexity of this problem increases with K, right? So that's the first problem. But the second problem, of course, is that this does not guarantee complete robust feasibility because I've, I've only sampled a set of K points on the uncertainty set. So the question is, how can you fully robustify the solution? So this is where cutting planes come into the picture. And so this inequality that I've shown here on the, on the bottom is essentially a generalization of the classical subtro elimination constraint. So, the left-hand side of this inequality, I'm not going to go through it in detail, but essentially it says how many arcs enter a given set, a subset S of your, of your set of delivery points, right? So I look at any given subset of the delivery points. The left-hand side is how many arcs are entering that set. The right-hand side essentially is the minimum number of vehicles that are required to carry the worst case load of S, right? So this quantity here, the summation over QI, I and S is a total demand of that set S. I look at the worst case value of that demand, divided by the vehicle capacity is roughly the number of vehicles I need. And if I round it up, I, I need to have at least that many arts to be to uh, entering that set S to be able to serve the demand under any possible demand realization. Uh, now, to the, the, the key point to note again here is that we are doing this over all possible customer sets. And so essentially our formulation with exponentially many variables and constraints, and each of these constraints essentially has a nested maximization problem. Um, and so the way we would work, and so the way this procedure would work is you solve again the restricted LP um, uh, over a subset of the routes. You then you you price partially robust routes. You then check if there are any violated inequalities, and if there are any violated cards, you add them back uh, into your into your restricted master, and then you essentially iterate this procedure. And again, when you embed this whole thing into a, a tree search, you essentially have a robustified branch price and card procedure. Um, and so the, the, the last thing I'll talk about is, okay, how do you actually separate these robustified cuts? And so um, the way this, and so you can show that actually separation or these, uh, separating these inequalities actually strongly and be hard. And so this is typically done using a heuristic, right? So this is essentially done during some sort of a greedy search where you start from some set S, but then you just incrementally change it by removing or adding a single customer. So in some sense, again, you're doing this iteratively uh, over and practically speaking, you're enumerating thousands of these sets every second in your cut separation round and successive sets are differing very incrementally, right? And so the key idea here is that again, the same data structures that we use for local search actually turn out to be relevant in this context as well. So the key features of our approach are that it allows us to balance the effort between column and cut generation uh, using this parameter K. So, right, so if I, the more uh, scenarios I, I, I kind of robustify partially against in the column generation routine, the less work I have to do in card generation, but the fewer scenarios I do that, the more work I have to do in my card generation. Um, now, the one thing I haven't really spoken about, but this has to be said, which is that a modern branch price and cut algorithm, especially in the routing context, uh, involves a very sophisticated implementation, right? So this, this can take years of effort to implement. Um, and uh, I refer you to this paper uh, in, in Math Programming 2020 to get, uh, a, a, get to get a sense for how complicated this can get. 
But the key message that I want to kind of show is that, okay, if you want to do robust routing on top of this, none of this changes, right? All of this stays can stay as it is. You don't have to actually mess with the branch price and cut engine, so to speak. Um, and so the way we tested this uh, was, uh, so these authors uh, in, in the math program paper have provided a VRP solver interface. And we essentially added essentially less than 500 lines of extra C++ code to robustify it, right? Um, and so, so the, on the Y axis, I've shown the optimality gap uh, or from our approach. And on the X axis, it's just different types of uncertainty sets, right? So you have a combination of demand, demand and travel times and so forth. Uh, and the blue bars are the optimality gaps that we obtain using our proposed approach. And so the height, the lower, the better. Uh, and in the orange, I've essentially collected the, the best of all existing methods. Um, and so the, the one thing I'll highlight is that the, some of many of these existing methods are not applicable to all of the uncertainty sets, whereas our approach is in some sense a bit agnostic to the type of the structure of the uncertainty set. Um, and except for one particular case where we actually do worse, um, uh, sorry, so this is the case where we actually do a lot worse, but compared to, if you, if you leave that aside, we actually are fairly competitive across a range of different uncertainty sets. So I realize I'm running out of time, so I'll stop there. Uh, and so in summary, um, uh, this is the, the key message, right? So you have a lot of classical algorithms for deterministic routing. And so the question was, okay, can we make minimal changes to these classical algorithms uh, to address uncertainty? Uh, and so hopefully we showed some ways in which you can do that and I encourage others to also take up this video. Yeah, so thank you so much. Thank you so much, Anurd, for wonderful slides, very clear talk and uh, simplicity, both both in the communication and the method. Um, and, uh, uh, that sometimes uh, adding 500 lines of code, of which 499 are comments, are uh, <laughs> hopefully if clear comments, um, uh, it can help uh, in these cases. I think that in the interest of time, I'm going to take questions to the breakout rooms, which will be in about half an hour after Sophie's talk. So please stick around if you have questions yes. for Anurud. Um, uh, so let's uh, let's let's thank Anirudh for, yep. for the thanks, Anirudh. Thanks, Anirudh. All right.